Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston and welcome to lecture 17 of Introductory Linear Algebra. In today's class, we're going to start a brand new topic. We're going to start looking at systems of linear equations. And sort of the purpose of this is it gives us another common application of matrices. We've already seen one use of matrices, and that is for representing linear transformations. Okay, but the other most common use of matrices is for helping us solve systems of linear equations. Okay, and the way to think about systems of linear equations is, well, probably in previous courses, you spent all sorts of time learning how to solve a single equation. And then, you know, as you went from one math class to the next to the next, they kept on throwing extra wrinkles into those equations. So maybe you started off learning how to solve linear equations, and then you learned how to solve quadratic equations. And then maybe you learned a little bit about polynomial equations in general. And then maybe you learned about exponential and logarithmic equations and so on. So you just kept on ramping up the type of equation that you learned how to solve. Okay, well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sort of dial that back. We're gonna go back to the simplest type of equation, linear equations, and we're going to ramp up in a different direction. Instead of making the equation uglier and uglier, we're going to keep it dead simple, but we're going to add more variables to it. And then we're going to ask the question again, well, how do we solve this now that there's this new wrinkle, now that there's a whole bunch of variables there? All right, so that's where we're going. Let's dive in. Okay, so what is a linear equation? Well, it's an equation with a whole bunch of variables, like I just said except you can't do crazy things to those variables, okay? We're not gonna be taking exponentials or logarithms or trig functions or anything like that. Instead, all we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply them by some constants, right? So a1, a2, up to an, those are just some numbers, they're constants. And b is also a number, all right? So the way to think about this equation here is we're sort of taking linear combinations of variables, right? We're sort of doing scalar multiplication and addition. And that's all we're allowed to do. If those are the only things that you do, then that's called a linear equation. All right, so let's go through a couple examples of types of equations that are linear and equations that are not linear. All right, so first example, 2x plus 5y equals 17. Ask yourself, is that a linear equation or a nonlinear equation? And all you have to do is you go back up to this definition here and say, hey, can I write this equation in this form here? And yeah, I can, right? Here, x and y, those are my two variables. And then two and five, those are my a1 and a2. Those are the constants in front of those variables. And then 17 is b, that's the right-hand side. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's a linear equation. That's basically what linear equations look like, right? It's some multiple of a variable plus some multiple of a variable equals a number. Okay, that's linear equations. Next example, three-fifths times x equals seven y plus 2.3. Is that a linear equation? And yes, this one is as well. It's written in a slightly different form, okay? You might be a little concerned by the fact that the seven y is over on the right-hand side instead of on the left-hand side, but that doesn't matter. The point is the equation can be written in this form, okay? So to convert this into sort of the standard linear equation form, we would just subtract seven y from both sides to move it over to the left, okay? The point is this equation, it can be written in the standard form. So yes, it's linear, okay? The fact that it's not written in that quite not quite written in that form there is sort of irrelevant. All right, what about this one? Here we've got three variables now, x and y and z. So we've got 3x plus root 2y plus 4z equals sine of 1. Is that a linear equation? And this one's a little bit trickier. Yes, it is a linear equation, okay? And maybe it doesn't look like it at first because I said, hey, no trig functions and, you know, no, no other weird things. And here we've got a sine of one and a root two. And maybe those concern you a little bit, but remember, root two, that's just a number. And sine of one, that's just a number, okay? I mean, you could plug it into a calculator and get a decimal expansion if you wanted, all right? So in the terminology of the definition up above, this root two, that's just a two. And sine of one, that's just the scalar b on the right-hand side. Those are numbers. So yes, that's okay. That's a linear equation as well. On the other hand, if I did sine to a variable or square rooted a variable, then that's not a linear equation. Okay, here I've got 3x. Well, 3x is fine. That, that doesn't break linearity. But then 2 times root of y, that's a problem. Okay, you can't do weird things to variables. You can't do square roots of variables or, you know, any power of a variable other than, you know, 0 or 1. You can't do trig functions to variables. You can't do exponentials of variables and all those sorts of things. You can't do weird, weird things to variables. Not allowed. All right, what about 2 times xy minus 3x over z equals minus 7? 
this is also not a linear equation, okay? You can't multiply variables together. You can't divide variables by each other. Both of those things are not allowed because there's no way to rewrite that equation in this standard form up here, in this form that's given in the definition box, okay? There's no way to sort of break the variables apart so that you're only multiplying them by scalars. It just can't be done, all right? So that's sort of the flavor of, uh, of linear equations, okay? Well, let's ramp up then, okay? Just having one linear equation, you can't possibly hope to solve it, right? If you just had one linear equation with say three variables, you know, three X plus two Y plus seven Z equals three, what are X, Y, and Z? There are lots of possibilities, of course, right? You can solve for one of the variables in terms of the other ones, but you can never solve it completely. Like you can never find out particular values for those variables, okay? So typically what we do is we ramp up to systems of linear equations, and what these are is, well, they're linear equations, and it's a whole bunch of linear equations, all with the same variables, okay? And then the idea is you want to solve them concurrently. You want to find values of those variables such that they make every single one of the equations true at the same time. All right, so yeah, we say the solution of a system of linear equations, so just think of it as like a collection or a set of linear equations, it's a particular vector of, you know, values of those variables that satisfy all of the equations in that linear system. Okay, and then the solution set of a system of linear equations, it's just the set of all solutions, okay? So maybe there's a unique solution, right? Maybe there's one particular value for x1, x2, up to xn that makes all of the equations true. Or, you know, maybe there's a whole bunch of solutions, just like, just like with just a single equation. I don't know, okay? Well, let's think about this geometrically to get a bit of a feel for how systems of linear equations behave, all right? So just to start off with sort of a simple example uh, with just two equations and two variables, this, this is a linear system or a system of linear equations, right? This top equation here, that's linear, right? It's some scalar times x plus some scalar times y equals some scalar. And then this bottom equation, that's also linear. It's some scalar times x plus some scalar times y equals some scalar. And then there, the two equations, they have the same variables, okay? The variables are x and y in both of them, okay? And then the idea behind a linear system is I want to find some values of x and y that make both of these true, Okay, I want both of these to be true when I plug in that value of x and y. Okay, so the way I'm going to get at this for now is to think about it geometrically. We'll look at we'll look at sort of the algebraic method for solving this soon, but for now geometrically. Okay, each of these each of these equations is actually the equation of a line, right? And maybe to to make this a little bit easier to realize, what you can do is you can rearrange each of these equations into the form y equals something. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, if I rearrange this top equation into the form y equals something, so I just bring the 2y over to the right-hand side, the minus 2 over to the left-hand side, and then divide by the coefficient 2 here. This equation here, once I rearrange it, it looks like y equals 1 half x plus 1. Okay, and that's the equation of a line, right? It's a line with slope 1 half and y-intercept 1. Okay, so y-intercept 1 and its slope is a half, right? It only goes up half a box for every box you go over to the right. Okay, so this top equation here tells us that if there's a solution, it's got to be on this line. All right, well, let's just do the same thing for the bottom equation now. Okay, again, that's the equation of a line. And to make it feel a little bit more comfortable to us, let's just rearrange it so that it's of the form y equals junk. Okay, so I just rearrange it, put the y over on all by itself on the right-hand side, move the constant over here, and then divide by the coefficient in front of y. I'm going to get see that this is here. It's equivalent to y equals 3 halves x minus 3. Okay, so this time slope is 3 halves, y-intercept is minus 3. So y-intercept is minus 3 down there, slope is 3 halves. Okay, so if there's a solution to this system of linear equations, it's got to be on this line here. Okay, but that means if I want a value of x and y that satisfies both of these equations simultaneously, in other words, I want a value of x and y that solves the entire linear system, not just one of the equations, it's got to be up here. Right? It's got to be up at the intersection of those two lines. That's the only point that solves both of those equations because that's the only point that's on both of those lines. Okay, And we can just sort of count boxes here to figure out where that point is. It's over four units and it's up three units. So it looks, at least if I've drawn my picture sort of right, it looks like the solution is four thirds, or sorry, four, three, x equals four, y equals three. And you can plug those values back into these two equations here to see that, yeah, that actually does work. If you plug in x equals four and y equals three, then here you're gonna get four minus six equals minus two. Yeah, check, that works. 
Here you're gonna get 12 minus six equals six. Yeah, check, that works, great. So we found the solution, okay? So the solu and it turns out that the solution is unique in this case because we know that if, if I have two lines and they're not parallel to each other, they're gonna intersect exactly once. All right, so that's one possibility of what can happen with linear systems. You might get a unique solution, but there's some other possibilities as well. So let's look at those, okay? So to illustrate these other possibilities, let's suppose that I tweak the above linear system a little bit, okay? So if I leave the top equation alone, it's still x minus 2y equals minus 2, but I tweak the bottom equation a bit. So now it's going to be 3x minus 6y equals minus 6. All right, so I'm going to do what I did before, okay? I'm going to plot the lines that these equations correspond to. So again, the top one, I didn't change it, so it's still that line y equals 1 half x plus 1, okay? But now the bottom equation it is also the line y equals one half x plus one, okay? And maybe that seems a little strange at first, but look at these two equations here. What relationship do they have to each other? Well, the bottom equation is exactly triple the top equation, okay? So if ever you have a pair of xy values that satisfy the top equation, they're gonna satisfy the bottom equation, right? Because you're just taking a true statement and multiplying both sides by three. It's still a true statement. Okay, so these two equations here, they represent the same line. So how do I solve both of these equations? Well, I just pick any xy pair that's on that line. Every single point on that line is a solution. So in particular, there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, and that's another thing that can happen with these systems of linear equations. Yeah, you might have a unique solution, and you might have infinitely many solutions as well. All right. And there's actually another possibility as well, okay? And to illustrate this, let's again tweak the linear system just a little bit, okay? So I've left the top equation the same again, and I've tweaked the bottom equation, so that's a little bit different. So top equation, still the same line, y equals one half x plus one. Bottom equation though now, if you rearrange that so that you have y all on its lonesome on one side and everything else on the other side, you get y equals one half x minus one. So in other words, it's the same as the top equation, except sort of shifted down a little bit. It's parallel to the top line, okay? And the point here is, well, again, remember, you want xy pairs that satisfy both of these equations. So you want xy pairs that are on both of these lines. And there are none, right? I mean, those are parallel lines. They don't have any points in common. So there's no solution in this case, okay? There's no way that you can satisfy both of these equations at the same time. And you can sort of see this algebraically if you stare at these equations hard enough, right? On the left-hand side, if I take the left-hand side of the top and multiply it by three, I get the left-hand side on the bottom. Okay, so what that tells me is if the top equation is satisfied, then, well, okay, x minus 2y has got to equal minus 2. If I multiply that by 3, I see that 3x minus 6y has to be minus 6. But the bottom equation wants to be plus 6. And there's no way that it can be minus 6 and plus 6 at the same time. 3x minus 6y cannot equal two different things. So there cannot be a solution to this entire system of linear equations. Only one of the equations or the other one can be solved at a single time for a single uh, xy pair. All right. So that's, that's, that's another possibility. You could have a unique solution, infinitely many, or no solutions. And it turns out that's it. Okay, those are the only three possibilities, okay? You can have one, zero, or inf infinitely many solutions, but nothing else. You're never gonna have a linear system that has exactly two solutions, for example, or exactly seven solutions. It just doesn't exist, it's not possible, and that's something that we'll prove in the next lecture, okay? For now, though, I wanna draw a picture in three-dimensional space as well, because you can sort of get a feel for this in three-dimensional space as well. If, if you draw a picture in 3D, what this corresponds to is a linear system with three variables. Now your variables are x, and y and z, okay? And depending on how many different equations you have, you're gonna have different numbers of intersecting planes this time instead of intersecting lines in 2D, okay? So this equation on the left here, I've got three planes, sort of a green one, a blue one, and a purple one. That corresponds to three equations in the linear system with three variables. And you can see here in this picture that there's a unique point of intersection of all three planes in the middle there. So that corresponds to a linear system with a unique solution, exactly one solution. In this next picture, again, three planes, that means three, uh, three equations in the linear system, but this time they're intersecting in a line. There's a common line on all three planes. So in that case, there's gonna be infinitely many solutions.
In this picture on the right, again, you've got three planes, so three equations, but this time, even though there are points of intersection between any two of the planes, there's no common point of intersection of all three planes. There's sort of a hollow tunnel going through the middle here. There's no common spot where they intersect, okay? So in that case, there's no solutions, okay? There's no solution of that linear system. And it turns out the same sort of thing happens in higher dimensions, okay? You can construct linear systems with no solutions or one solution or infinitely many, but that's it. Those are the only possibilities. So again, we'll prove that next class and I will see you then for that.